Conservative Party Chairman James Cleverley says there are a number of ideas aimed at making sure every part of the UK feels properly connected to politics. It's one of a range of things that we are we are looking into. But fundamentally what this is about is it, it's about demonstrating to people that we are going to do things differently. Separately, Labour is reportedly nominating the former Commons Speaker John Burko for a peerage. The Conservative government took the highly unusual decision not to offer him a place in the House of Lords after he stepped down from the chair last year. A cold weather alert has been issued with sub-zero temperatures expected to continue. Public Health England says the alert is in place for 48 hours from this evening. It's urging people to prepare for the conditions and look out for those most at risk. LBC weather, a frosty start and then mostly dry with sunny spells, some fog patches in the west, cloudier and windier in the far north and a high of 7 degrees. From Global's newsroom for LBC, I'm Simon Conway. So, this is how it is, money. My daughter has flown the nest. I put up 10% as security for her new home. And when she keeps up with her repayments, I'm going to get it all back with interest in five years from Barclays. I will miss her. I'll even miss Dave, her cat. So come on, money. How about we go buy a kitten? Barclays Family Springboard Mortgage. Make money work for you. Your home may be repossessed if mortgage payments are missed. Deposit returned with interest after five years if no repayments missed. Subject to application financial circumstances and borrowing history. T's and C's apply. This is LBC from Global, leading Britain's conversation, The Nigel Farage Show. Good morning, everybody. Well, the Queen said that this would be sorted out in days, not in weeks or months. And I have to say, I was a little sceptical about that. But overnight, it has been sorted out. We know we now know the future direction of of Harry and Meghan. We know what their roles and responsibilities and indeed titles are going to be. Very good cartoon on the front page of the Sunday Times, a Newman cartoon, one chap saying to another, what a pity that the Queen was not put in charge of the Brexit negotiations. And the headline of the day, I have to give it to the Sunday Mirror, Queen orders a hard Megxit. So I think the Mirror absolutely gets the front page of the day from me. Now look, You may already have heard news reports, commentary um, about these statements that were put out last night. Let me read them to you so you understand the tone. Firstly, the statement from the Queen in full. Following many months of conversations and more recent discussions, I am pleased that together we have found a constructive and supportive way forward for my grandson and his family. Harry, Meghan and Archie will always be loved members of my family. I recognise the challenges they have experienced as a result of intense scrutiny over the last two years and support their wish for a more independent life. I would like to thank them for all their dedicated work across this country, the Commonwealth and beyond, and am particularly proud of how Meghan has so quickly become one of the family. It is my whole family's hope that today's agreement allows them to start building a happy and peaceful new life. But what does all that mean? Well, the Buckingham Palace statement itself tells you what it means. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex are grateful to Her Majesty and the Royal Family for their ongoing support as they embark on the next chapter of their lives. As agreed in this new arrangement, they understand that they are required to step back from royal duties, including official military appointments. They will no longer receive public funds for royal duties. With the Queen's blessing, the Sussexes will continue to maintain their private patronages and associations. While they can no longer formally represent the Queen, the Sussexes have made clear they will do everything they can to continue to uphold the values of Her Majesty. The Sussexes will not use their HRH titles as they are no longer working members of the royal family. The Duke and Duchess have agreed to repay the sovereign grant expenditure for the refurbishment of Frogmore Cottage. That was £2.4 million. And that will remain their UK family home. Buckingham Palace does not comment on the details of security arrangements. There are well-established independent processes to determine the need for publicly funded security. This new model will take effect in the spring of 2020. And there's also an update on the Sussex Royal website where you can explore the current works of their royal highnesses, is what the website says. Well, not for much longer. So that's the deal. It's been done. I wonder, 
I want to do myself, who are the winners and losers out of all of this? My observations are that the Queen emerges uh, very much as a decisive leader. I mean, because I think what she feared was, and we had this debate all last Sunday uh, on, on the show, you can't have your cake and eat it. I think a lot of people, you know, you may well wish Harry and Meghan and Archie well in their new life, but you can't have your cake and eat it. The Queen has dealt with that, I think, decisively. She comes through to me as being a strong leader, although at a personal level, I'm not quite sure how much of her great-grandchild she's going to see, or indeed has seen, for the last few months. Meghan comes out as a huge winner. I mean, she's still, she's still going to be the Duchess of Sussex. She's got basically no more public engagements of any kind to do. She can head off to the West Coast, appear on the Opera Winfrey show, go back to films. She's got everything she wants. And Harry, well, he got a happy marriage, a child. Uh, he th it, it, but if he thinks he'll be getting away from media scrutiny by doing this, it'll be the opposite. Because if they're off to make their own money in Hollywood, goodness me, I mean, even me as an English politician... Uh, you know, in Los Angeles, out at dinner, you walk out of a restaurant, there are cameras in your faces, you're followed everywhere you go, uh, and, and I think he's in for a shot. I also worry for Harry with the army, having been such a fundamentally important part of his life, you know, almost like, you know, in a sense, a family that he was part of, uh, and there he was, Captain General of the Royal Marines, many other military appointments, he's got to give all of those up. So I think the whole thing's very sad. I think the monarchy is damaged. Personally, I do. Uh, but given where we were this time last week, my view is it's the right conclusion. Well, let me ask somebody who was with us last week and who studied these things for many, many years. And I'm joined by Phil Dampier, royal commentator and author of Royally Suited, Harry and Meghan in their own words. Phil, good morning to you. Good morning, Nigel. So, I have to say... When the Queen said she'd do this in days, she has, hasn't she? She certainly has, Nigel, and uh, she's acted decisively. Um, I think I was on your show last week, and I yeah. said that I didn't think that she would strip them of the titles. Uh, and I also said that I thought they were a bargaining chip. So I, sp I suppose I was half right. They have, <laughs> she, hasn't <te> <laughs> she hasn't technically stripped them of the titles, but of course they're, uh, they're not using them. But as you say, even last night on their website, they were referring to themselves as their royal highnesses. So they do like to sort of be unpredictable, this couple, and you don't really know where you are with them. But uh, interestingly, one commentator, Alistair Bruce, who does know a lot about these things, was saying last night that he thought that, uh, it, that almost the titles were in cold storage, in abeyance, and they could literally be defrosted at a moment's notice sometime in the future and reused. So yes. I, I don't know what circumstances he foresaw that might happen. I suppose possibly if, if, if Harry... If, God forbid, they split up and Harry wants to come back and carry mm. on with his royal duties, I suppose that's one possibility. But uh, it is a very strange up-in-the-air situation. But uh, basically, you're talking about winners and losers. Mm. I agree with you. I think that uh, Meghan is a big winner in this. She's yeah. got pretty much what she wants. I don't think she's bothered about HRH in front of her name as long as she can call herself the Duchess of Sussex and make money and do the deals and, and support the charities and causes she wants to. I think Harry, at the moment, is, is, is partly a winner but could be a big loser in the long run. As you say, he's... Um, He's given up a lot. He's he's given up to some extent his his friends, his family, his his attachments. Everything with with with, with the military. I mean, something like, uh, as you say, the Captain General of the Marines, which he was handed by mm. Prince Philip. That's mm. not a light thing. That's something that he would have been very, very proud of. And I think to give that up is, is going to be very difficult for him. And uh, he's going to carry on, of course, with the Invictus Games. Uh, that's the one massive, you know, success story that he can claim. But uh, to lose all those things is, is going to be very difficult. Interestingly, one thing you haven't mentioned so far is that this is going to be reviewed in 12 months. Yeah. So if it's not working or if, if, if the Queen feels that, you know, they're becoming too commercial or... Or if, if if it's just not working out for them, this can change. So it's uh, it's it's mm. this is this is how we move forward. We still don't know about the costs of security, but um, there's still quite a lot of unanswered questions. Uh, yeah, I mean, reviewed in a year's time. But you know what, Phil? Somehow, I don't see Meghan moving back. Do you? I don't see her moving back. I mean, they're saying that they're going to keep Frogmore Cottage. They're going to pay back the cost on that, but they are going to keep it as their as their home. What is going to be interesting in the next couple of months? All of this starts in the spring. Uh, they're saying, and they might have a couple of jobs before then. And I, I shall be absolutely fascinated to see if they do actually come into into contact with members of the public what sort of reaction they get i'm sure there'll be some people who will just as usual be in awe of them and and, and mm. just you know clap them and cheer them but i just wonder whether there'll be anyone well, who anyone who'll be slightly uh, slightly less enthusiastic it's it's interesting phil isn't it there is a generational split on this i mean i you know i was last week using the word duty he was born to this it's a duty he's letting the side down and i think actually 
probably a significant majority of the over 40s in the country, over 50s in the country feel that. And yet younger people say they should just be happy. Yeah. So, uh, And I guess in a sense, in a sense, if they are giving up the titles and they are giving up, uh, you, you, you know, many, uh, many of the things that go with royalty, in a sense, they've got a chance to go and be happy, haven't they? Absolutely. And I, I wish them happiness. I genuinely hope this is yes. the best thing for them. I genuinely hope they can make it work. And who knows, in four or five years, we may look back and say it was a good thing for the monarchy. You never know if it works in some, mm. in some way. It, it, could, it could reboot them. But uh, at the moment, I have my doubts. As I say, my one big fear is that, uh, you know, something might go wrong with their marriage and then we're going to be really in trouble. Because, in a very uh, odd place. You know, yeah, but we're going to be, Harry's going to be, having, Harry's going to have massive problems there. So I hope it does work. I think even people who, you know, older people, as you say, look at the Queen's sense of duty and the, the shift that she's put in for 67 years, mm, mm. Uh, you know, they will sympathise and say, well, if you want to go off, good luck, but we don't, you know, we don't necessarily feel we ought to pay for it. And is this the modern day ab- abdication? It is, it's obviously not quite the same as, uh, as Edward VIII because he was never going to be, you know, he was never heir to the throne. He was all when he's now six in line to the throne. So he's well, he's giving that up too, isn't he's, he? he? He's way to, No, he's still going to be six in line is to the he? throne. Yeah, he's not going to give that up. Oh, um, he'll okay. still be six in line. He'll still be the Duke of Sussex. Uh, but he'll be on the same, the same sort of status and level as the other 20 or 30 odd dukes yeah. uh, in the country. Uh, people like the Duke of Devonshire and Duke of... He won't have the, uh, won't have the royal title, so he'll just be a duke. Yeah. But he'll still be... Six in line to the throne. Archie will still be seventh in line to the throne. Uh, and, uh, you know, they're, they're still there if needed. Now, they've promised, haven't they, to uphold the values of Her Majesty. Mm. And that, I'm guessing, is referring to what kind of commercial arrangements they're about to go into. Mm. What do you think would be appropriate? What do you think would be inappropriate? Well, th- this is the this is the big question in my mind. You know, is it going to be? Are they going to have some tacky sponsorships, or you know, are they going to do some charity deal? And wh- while you know, Megan flashes a Rolex watch or something, and then you know, mm. two days later, there's an advert for it. So this is going to be the big problem. How are they going to be financially independent? How are they going to make money without commercialising and cheapening the monarchy? And uh, it's not clear yet whether they can continue to use the the Sussex royal name. Whether it, they're just going to have to change it to Sussex or, or whether they can keep the royal. That doesn't seem to have been quite thrashed out yet. Uh, but this, this, I think, is going to be the fundamental problem, and this is why I think they're going to review mm. it after 12 months, because if they feel it's, you know, getting too cheap and too tacky, I think uh, Thomas Markle, her dad, has already made a, 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 apparently a TV interview, which is going to be shown soon, in which he says, uh, he says rather, rather accurately, you know, she's turning the monarchy into uh, Walmart with a crown on. And uh, I thought that was quite, yeah. quite a good analogy. You know, that is, that is the big danger. Yeah, well, we had a form a Royal Marines officer, an SBS officer last week, saying we cannot have the monarchy privatised. No. Um, and, and, and I guess that's why the titles, in a sense, have to go. And that's why I don't think the website Royal Sussex can be sustainable for that no, reason. I, no, I don't. Coming back to the winners and losers, one thing I did want to say before we go nicely yeah. is that I, I think the other big loser in this is Prince William. I, I feel very, very sorry mm, for him. He's, own, he, he, right at the heart of this is two brothers who were once very, very close falling out. Um, you know, that was probably the start of the problems. Uh, and now, of course, not only has he lost, you know, a brother to some extent, I mean, I, I hope they make it up and I hope they're still in contact, mm. but, uh, you know, to all intents and purposes, his brother's going to be living abroad, so he's not going to see much of him. He hasn't got that support, but now there's a hell of a burden on William and Kate, because, you wow. know, the Queen is nearly 94, <laughs> Prince Philip's retired at 98. Yep. <laughs> Prince, Prince Andrew's, Princess Prince Anne Andrew's is, out of the picture. Uh, Andrew's, Andrew's out of the picture. Yeah, yeah there's uh, no Princess one left. Anne is 70 this year, Camilla, Charles and Camilla. So, you know, there's a hell of a lot on yeah. William and Kate's shoulders. He's always been a bit reluctant to, uh, you know, to, to, to take into his role extremely uh, fully. And in recent years has, you know, really upped his game. But uh, now he's going to have to up it even more. And I do, I, do, I do feel for him. I think there's, um, you know, a lot on his shoulders. That's a very good point. Thank you very much indeed. That was Phil Dampier, royal commentator and author of Royally Suited, Harry and Meghan, in their own words, are making a very, very good point that Prince William is pretty much on his own and the level of responsibilities that he and his wife are going to have to commit to. Uh, Well, I wonder. They're going to have to think about it quite carefully. So I want to know, who are the winners? Who are the losers? You've heard my views. You've heard Phil Dampier's views. You tell me who the winners and losers are. 0345 973. This is The Nigel Farage Show. Sunday morning. It's 16 minutes past 10. This is LBC. Play along with our 10 second teaser. Ready? What is the only number not represented in Roman numerals? The answer is zero. If you got that right, you must be pretty smart. 
so you'll know who to choose for your business accounting, audit and tax affairs. Search Barnes Rofe. Clever accountants for business. Trade later life for greater life with McCarthy and Stone's brand new development in Hatfield, Highclere House. To find out more and make the most of your retirement, join us for fizz and canapes and speak to our dedicated team on hand to answer your questions, whether renting, buying or a bit of both. Don't miss out. Make sure to join us on the 21st of January to secure your dream apartment. To find out more, call 0800 201 4691. Retirement living to the full. As a small business owner, I need to know that when I'm out on business, I'm not closed for business. I no longer need an office, just um, a little peace and quiet at the boardroom table, which is also the coffee shop table. At O2, we get small businesses. That's why you can work from anywhere on the best business network. Search O2 Business or visit an O2 shop. 2019 Mobile Industry Awards terms apply. See o2.co.uk slash terms. Parents, you know your child. You know the way they learn is different to others. And Inter High School knows this too. For 15 years, Inter High has specialised in providing a fully interactive, tailored online school supporting your child to achieve their best results from primary school age through to A-level. To discover more about Inter High School, join their next online open evening on the 22nd of January. Register at interhigh.co.uk <coughs> Hello! It's time you swapped your daily grind for some sun, sea and salsa! Sangria! Sun lounger! Siesta! Salsa! The dip! Sandals, Santa lotion. Uh, we've done sounds, right? We in the Seychelles, Spain, or anywhere else in the world at surprisingly low prices. When you need a holiday, it's time to travel Republic. Book with confidence at all protected. Leading Britain's conversation, LBC, the Nigel Farage Show. So Harry and Meghan will not be using the titles HRH. They will be living. Out in Vancouver, they will keep Frogmore Cottage. They'll be paying apparently a rent on it. They'll also be repaying the £2.4 million that was spent on refurbishing it. And they're going off to make their own money. The Queen has acted decisively. The Queen has told them, you cannot have your cake and eat it, because that was how it first appeared. Uh, it seems to me the Queen has been... Very, very decisive in all of this. Uh, and I think she emerges as a winner in one sense. As a winner uh, in terms of her own reputation, uh, at, at dealing with difficult issues. But on a personal level, she's quite a big loser, isn't she? Because her grandson's going to go and live in a different part of the world. Her great-grandson, who apparently she's not seen for months anyway. Uh, you know, Is she going to see him again more than once a year? Or I don't know. Um, Meghan, big winner. Harry? Well, I'm, I'm not so sure. What do you think, folks? What does Charlotte think? A new caller from Aylesbury to LBC. Good morning, Charlotte. Good morning. Welcome. Hi, I'm... Well, I'm... I'm um, when this all came out, I was very like everybody else, I think. Oh, yes, Megan, you know, Megan's done this, Megan's done that. And, um... <coughs> excuse me, children in the background. Bless you. And now, you know, now that I've kind of had time to process it, I think good for him. You know, if he wants to go out, he was, like I said, he, he was never going to be one to conform to the royal standards anyway. Um, you know, with, with his past and his teenage years, if you like. Um, yeah, but but, yeah, but, but, but but Charlotte, nobody, I mean, I mean, in some ways that made him even more popular in the country. It made the monarchy more popular, didn't it? Yeah, I, I agree with that. I do agree with that. He will be missed. He will be massive. There'll be a massive gap in the monarchy. But I think he's damned if he does and he's damned if he doesn't. Mm. You know, well, if he if he doesn't seem to be seen to be protecting his wife and child, he'll be slammed for that. Yes. And if he you know, and if he does, he's being slammed for that. He kinda of can't win, so but but, yeah. but but Charlotte, you know, I just think to myself, you know, his connections, his links with the mm. army, with the military, you know, he you know, he yeah. ser he served for ten years, two tours of Afghanistan. He seems to I mean, you know, you see him at the 
annual um, um, festival, uh, um, um, a, pop, a poppy fields outside yeah. uh, in, in Westminster, the Abbey. Uh, you know, he turns up for cavalry parades. He, he, he's captain general of the Royal Marines. I mean, isn't he going to miss all of that? Isn't that going to be a huge hole in his life? And what's he going to do? What's he? I mean, she may go back to acting. It was even suggested. That's what I've just said to my partner. You know, yeah. maybe Harry's going to go and do his army thing, and she'll go back to acting. But, but, but yeah, but Charlotte, he can't do his army things on the no. west coast. He can't no, do them. And she can go and back to acting, and it's been suggested to me that maybe if they update the crown, she might play herself, you know. Um, but, <laughs> but, 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 you know, we know the world that she can go back to, and she's now yeah. she's now a hundred times more famous than when she was an actress in Yeah, in no, I, I, I get what that. What the I, I, hell I, does Harry do in Vancouver and Los Angeles? That's the question I'm he asking. He becomes a house dad. Oh, he, Is he become yeah, do you think you know, so? a house father? I, <laughs> I don't really know what else he can do. You know, you can, we can all joke and laugh and say, you know, can he go and work in Tesco's? Can he go and work in the co-op? What can he do? What What can you have a prince do? I uh, don't, yeah. Well, uh, you know, and, that, and that's why in this country... Yes, and he may have rebelled a bit, but his whole life has been in the royal family. His whole adult life has either been in or associated with the military. He's a mass, mm. and he's always been a massively popular figure in this country. And I, and he, yeah, absolutely. And I think you know we all watched the downfall of him after Diana, and then the up again. Well, well the teenagers in between, and then the up again now with with you know he found love in Meghan. Mm. And on one hand, absolutely wonderful. Go and live your best life with your son and your wife. Fine. But, yeah, there is the big side of the other. You know, you like I say, you can't just go and get a job in Tesco. No, no, or, you know, or, 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 or Walmart. That, or Walmart, which, and because which of would his, be And with there. the security, exactly, Walmart, because of the security of him, you can't just have him working a normal nine-to-five job because... He, you know, if he's not going to have the security no. around him... No, no, I think so potentially, no. potentially, he, I think he's a very big loser. Charlotte, thank you so much for your call. Caroline says she's incredibly disappointed in Harry. I think he'll regret, he'll live to regret it, and very soon. Joy says, I wish Harry and his family all the best in their life, wherever it may be. The world is turning. They deserve a good life. Moners, give them a break. Well, Joy, I think we're going to be less critical of them this Sunday than we were last Sunday. Because when you looked at the statement they'd put out, it was clear they wanted to have the best of both worlds. They wanted to have their cake and eat it. And that was not acceptable and made people pretty angry. Um, and I think now that it's done, now that it's clear, that and these Brexit analogies never stop, but, you know, that it really is Megxit, it really is a clean break, uh, I think people will in some senses be less critical um, of Harry, but still slightly critical, but less critical. Um, but I think there's going to be real, certainly from me, genuine scepticism about what on earth is he going to do with his life. Let's go to Peggy, who's a new caller to this show from Basildon. Good morning, Peggy. Good morning, Nigel. Well, I think, personally, there's only one winner, and yep. that is Megan, mm. a two-bit actress. And look at the riches now at her feet just through advertising and knowing the right people. I feel so sorry for the Queen and Prince William. The rest, oh, my God. She's brought, this, she's brought the monarchy, really, to its knees, I think. Do you know, Peggy, if I think about my children's age bracket, you know, one of the most appealing things to them about the monarchy has been Prince Harry. That's right. You know, right. And, 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 and it's kind of... He, he almost made the monarchy seem cool. You know, the fairy tale wedding, um, just the fact that he was such an engaging guy, the Invictus Games, even his time as a rebel. And I think Harry abdicating his responsibilities, I think it does real damage to the royal family, Peggy. I, I do, I do. But I think, we, I think personally, I've always thought he was flaky. I mean, they made the big mistake of their life, the royal family, making him walk behind his mother. Oh, wasn't that awful? That was, that was awful. Yes. And whether that's a lasting effect, because we've all lost parents we've lost our kids we've lost parents everyone you know is a terrible tragedies but that was a terrible thing they'd done do you know, Peggy, Mate, and they've learned do you, do you know peggy when that was happening i literally couldn't watch it i know it's terrible. i just thought how can you make a 12 year old do that i i, I have no. to say i'm not a softy at all but that was no. that was one time i thought wow this is this is too much so megan's a big winner the monarch is a loser what about the queen peggy is she a winner or a loser well i think she's done good coming up so quickly and doing that. as you say she should have done brexit but um uh i think i, I mean 
she's she's on borrowed time like us all at, in an uh, um, <laughs> upper age group. But um, I really think feel sorry for the Queen, and I hope it's all written down. Not just the Queen, um, Charles and William are takes off over. They cannot start advertising and bringing the bringing this country in this dis- district. The responsibilities, the responsibilities now on the Queen, Charles, and William are absolutely huge. Uh, and Peggy, the Queen is only a mere. 93 years old. Oh, no, and her, and her mother lived to 101. And yeah. I'm not sure that her mother lived the healthiest of lifestyles. So I've got every hope the Queen's going to be around for a long time, Peggy. Peggy, thank you for your call and for your thoughts. Karen is a new caller uh, to me, and she's from Westminster. Karen, good morning. Hi, good morning. I think there are different ways to look at the scenario. Okay. The Queen came to the throne very young, yep. so she was able to take care of her children and grandchildren throughout. They're totally provided for. Charles will be 90 in nine years, and then no. when he takes the throne... No, 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 no. Charles is 70, isn't he? I, I said in... Sorry. In a few... By the time Charles takes the throne... Harry's children won't even be in university. Who is going to provide for his children? Well, I see, Karen, I don't think that's a problem. because Why not? I'll tell you why. Because, yeah. because I think out in Los Angeles, out on the west coast of the USA... No, 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 I'm just saying if they were in the royal family still. But they could... Oh, oh yeah, well, if they... Who would provide for him? Because Charles would be out, William would be on the throne. He is not going to provide for, for Harry... Um, William's son will be taking over the Duchy of Cornwall. He's not going to provide for Harry. Who is going to provide for him and his children? Karen, this family look. This family look after their members. I mean, Princess Anne got was it Gatcombe? Um, No, I, I, I I don't think as members of the royal family they'd find themselves living in penury. Um, No, no, no. But you get it from okay. The Queen takes care of her children. Harry has not been taken care of. He's paying for Frogmore. The Queen well, pays for been. her four children. Yeah, but Karen, she, Harry is only now paying for Frogmore as part of this new arrangement. Now, I don't think, I don't think this decision has been taken um, on the grounds of financial security. I really don't. But I think they're going to become very rich on the West Coast, Karen, don't you? What's wrong with that? But there was another thing. <coughs> there was another thing. In twenty in two thousand six, there was an article on in Friday's newspaper on on the Daily Mail front page mm-hmm. where Harry was talking about leaving the royal family back in two thousand six on a tour with English. In two thousand sixteen, he was talking about ten years afterward before he met Meghan. So what about those times? Why are they blaming Meghan for something he has been thinking about for more than a decade? Yeah, no, that I I I saw that commentary, and and you know she's been the Daily Mail reporter on this for years and years and years. Look, we know he's had doubts, but but he was born to this, Karen. He's abdicated it. Uh, I wish him well, Karen. Thank you. I I I wish them well. I hope it's a great success for them. Uh, You know, at least a decision has been made, and I think the Queen has acted decisively and shown remarkable leadership in a difficult situation. You're listening to the Sunday edition of the Nigel Farage Show here on LBC. It's 10.30 and time for the news with Simon Conway. The Queen says Prince Harry and Meghan and their son Archie will always be much-loved members of her family. Buckingham Palace has confirmed from the spring the Sussexes will stop carrying out royal duties, they will no longer use their HRH titles and the public will stop funding them. Detectives are searching for a man suspected of stabbing a 10-year-old boy in Leicester. The child was attacked while out with his mother yesterday afternoon and is being treated in hospital. The government's confirmed it's looking into the idea of permanently moving the House of Lords out of London. York is reportedly the front-runner to host the new Second Chamber of Parliament, with Birmingham another contender. LBC weather after a frosty start, mostly dry with sunny spells. Some fog patches in the west, which could persist all day in a few places. Cloudier and windier in the far north, a high of 7 degrees. This is LBC. We interrupt this programme. We're facing a nationwide blackout. The Prime Minister has called Cobra. The situation is very grave. This is a national crisis. How long will this last? We need power. People in the worst affected areas will die. Reports of increasing unrest, protests, assault. When will the government take action? Any comment, Prime Minister? We will bring back power. We will turn the lights on again. Cobra, a brand new Sky original. All episodes available now.
It's creeping ever closer. The 31st of January deadline for filing your tax return is just days away. It's time to act. Download EY Tax Chat now and connect with EY Tax Professionals to prepare and submit your tax return from just £329. Beat the deadline with minimal effort and maximum confidence. Search or download EY Tax Chat now. How can it be fair that millions of people in the world are denied access to clean water at WaterAid? We need your help to create an equal world. Whether you're from Morden or Madagascar, everyone, everywhere should have access to clean water because clean water changes lives. You can help WaterAid change the picture. To find out how, search WaterAid Radio now. I never belong. I gotta be. This new year, get the whole family singing with an extra £500 off list price across the Skoda range between the 16th and 30th of January. Also available when purchasing with our finance offers. Search Skoda New Year New Car for more details. Driven by something different. Skoda. Exclude Citigo EIV and all SE technology variants. Order by the 30th of January and register by the 31st of March 2020. Off not available with contract hire. UK retail customers 18 plus. Finance subject to state as terms and conditions apply. Visit skoda.co.uk. Don't miss the January savings event only at Oak Furniture Land. There's great big savings on beautiful furniture that's always 100% solid hardwood. So, why wouldn't you? Our January savings event is online and in store now at Oak Furniture Land. Must end Sunday. This is your captain speaking. I'd like to welcome you on board today's flight. As we're currently behind schedule, we're going to skip all the pre flight checks and just proceed with takeoff. I've given the tyres a kick and I think we've got enough fuel to get there and the oil warning light hasn't come on yet, so buckle up and enjoy the flight. You wouldn't fly without the proper checks, so why drive without them? Highways England recommends you check your tyres, fuel and oil before every long journey. For more information on vehicle safety checks, search THINK. Leading Britain's conversation, The Nigel Farage Show. Tweet at LBC using the hashtag Farage on LBC. Decisive action from the Queen. The HRH titles will not be used by Harry and Meghan. Harry will be standing down from all his military positions and responsibilities. They're going to pay back the £2.4 million spent to update and modernise Frogmore Cottage and they will pay a commercial rent for it or certainly a rent for it in the future. Who are the winners and losers out of this deal? But yesterday in Liverpool... It was the Labour Party's first hustings of their leadership campaign to replace Jeremy Corbyn. This contest, which really kicked off properly yesterday, will be decided by the 4th of April. Yeah, that's how long this is going to go on. Let's just listen to some of the opening shots. Firstly, from Jess Phillips. We have got to start talking to people's hearts. This is a fight of our lives, and we're not even in the terrain we have got to do something different and something bold. And Boris Johnson would be terrified to face me. If all we do is win back our red wall seats, uh, we're going to lose the next general election. If all we do is get back to where we were, we will lose. We need to win in Scotland, we need to win in Wales, we need to win in the South West and the South East. I shadowed Boris Johnson Emily for Thornbury. two years when he was Foreign Secretary, and frankly, he didn't like it. We need to be able to hold him to account. He is, in the end, a liar. He is callous. He doesn't care. He plays at politics. He plays with people's lives. He needs to be held to account. That a lot of members are Lisa worried Mandy. that that would mean that they couldn't speak out. But I'll tell you this, it is perfectly possible to fight for the recognition of Palestine and to defend the right of Israel to exist. It is I've lived through the 40 Rebecca years Long of deindustrialisation that we've seen. And that child from Old Trafford who watched her family struggle is angry. Her life was nearly shattered and now she's here to shatter the Tory majority. Well, covering all of this yesterday was Rob Powell, political correspondent at Sky News. Rob, um, the opening shots uh, yesterday in this leadership campaign, were there any big shocks and surprises? 
Not really. It was a bit of a muted day, actually. Uh, I think the format of it sort of dampened everything down. Basically, the 600 uh, or so Labour members that were there had to hand in their questions in advance, and then they weren't actually able to ask them. They were picked and (laughs) sifted by... Uh, the um, I think Jenny Formby, the Labour um, boss, was uh, looking through it. And then also the chair, who was the political editor of the Liverpool Echo. And then the chair of it asked the questions for them. So they weren't able to stand up or uh, pitch in or anything like that. And each candidate only got 40 seconds to answer each question. So I don't know, it was difficult. You couldn't really get a sense of the depth of the answers. And I think it was difficult to kind of gauge the room as well. So difficult to tell whether there was anyone that was the standout winner or loser. And talking to members afterwards, they seemed pretty evenly split, actually. I found people that were uh, behind each one of the various candidates. And Rob, this whole process will go on almost unbelievably until the 4th of April. Aren't they in danger of the country getting a bit bored by them all? Yeah, it is an incredibly long process, and it is a lot more complicated than some other leadership elections as well. You have to get the MPs on board first. That process is already done. Then you have to get the affiliates on board, so the trade unions, other socialist societies that are linked to Labour. And only then, middle of February, do the members start um, voting. There'll be 11 more hustings um, around the country in the coming, what, 11 weeks or so. Uh, And then the result will be announced early April. So I guess it's not necessarily about keeping the public interested. It's more about speaking to Labour members because they're the ones that are going to be um, voting. So they stretched it out, I guess, to an extent so they can get around the most number of Labour members. Of course, other people that are a bit suspicious of um, Jeremy Corbyn and his grip on the top of the Labour Party wonder whether it is basically an excuse for him to stay in power for longer. But looking at sort of Prime Minister's questions and outings that Jeremy Corbyn has at the Commons, it's not exactly comfortable for him. So I'm not sure why he'd want to stay in that position for any longer than was necessary. He's done his bit, I think, in every way. And Rob, another story that you've been covering, and unbelievably, I think to many, Conservative Party James Cleverly confirming that the government are actually considering the practicalities of shifting the House of Lords outside of London to York or somewhere like that. I mean, is this a serious proposition? So I wonder whether this is sort of part of the political messaging that the government's trying to put out in terms of focusing outside of London and outside um, of the South East and, and whether in five years time this will be sort of confined to the dustbin of mm. Sunday political I stories. Think it will too. Um, mm. But I mean, what they are talking about is that they're looking at a range of options. One of them could be moving the Lords to York or possibly Birmingham. We learn that um, it also in the running. It would be a huge uh, logistical process to do it and it would be at great expense as well i mean i think people would probably be raising eyebrows as well as why are you moving the lords up to york if you're trying to sort of put government put politicians back in touch with real people why are you putting the secondary chain yeah, the yeah, um, is it just a bit of an expensive gesture um other options that are in this piece this morning though are, are things like the commons doing special sittings outside of london that feels like a more realistic option but i think whichever way it pans out i'm sure number 10 won't be unhappy with the Day of coverage about them possibly looking at sort of showing the northeast a bit of love. Okay, thanks ever so much indeed. That was Rob Powell, political correspondent at Sky News. I don't know about relocating the House of Lords. Strikes me as being cover for the real thing that should happen, which is massive wholesale reform and change of the House of Lords and make it elected. Rebecca Long Bailey and I at one on that. Well, let's get a bit more political interpretation of what's really going on behind the scenes in the Labour Party. And I'm going to talk to Kevin Maguire, the Associate Editor at the Daily Mirror. Kevin, good morning to you. Yeah, good morning, Nigel. You've been offered a peerage? No, good God, no. Um, what about you, a knighthood? What about a knighthood? Good God, no. You must be joking. They, Kevin, they like you more than they like me, but I can assure you. I'm not so sure. Not <laughs> well, so sure. all right. Call it, a, call it a tie on that one. Yeah, you know. We have something in common. Yeah. Now, yeah. Kevin, I have to congratulate the Mirror Group because the Sunday Mirror headline today, Queen orders a hard Megxit. Without doubt, the best front page of the day. And Kevin, tell me, how are these Labour leadership candidates facing up to a country that will have left the European Union? Yeah, by trying not to talk about it at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> is the way they're doing it. <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I mean, Jess Phillips kind of hinting that maybe we could rejoin. Yeah, then she backtracked. Uh, in fact, her, her first me- major media uh, appearance, a TV interview, uh, ended up in a clarification where she spoke about in 2024, 25 at the next general election, possibly proposing another referendum. Now, Keir Starmer, 
who was the shadow Brexit secretary, pushed very hard for Labour to propose a referendum, although he didn't want the Corbyn position of, of not saying how Labour would uh, w- would go in that referendum. He wanted it to be a recommend and remain. He's backed off and just accepts that Britain will be out and just kind of leave it. There'll have to be a formal word in the manifesto, and it might be you know, closer cooperation, be warmer. But I, I can't see the next uh, Labour manifesto fight in the last election with uh, a, a, refer- a referendum proposal. But no, they're keeping their heads down. Uh, mm. they'll, wait, they'll wait for the uh, 31st to be out of the way, and they'll get stuck into the trade negotiations with the European Union, which are, are just going to be tricky. Of course, there'll be talks with Trump down the line. That's where they will focus. Yeah, and so far, I know it's really, really early in this in this process that goes on to the 4th of April, which is almost unbelievable. But I have to say, I did really did think that Lisa Nandy did incredibly well with Andrew Neil the other evening. No, I think I think she uh, I think she would be their their best choice. Uh, I think she's got the Do most you? potential. Uh, yeah, absolutely. She did well at the hustings within Parliament with her with her fellow MP. She did well yesterday, Andrew Neil. She kind of just. She, she left aside bluster and tried to answer the questions honestly. We know Boris Johnson uh, dodged the Andrew Neil interview during the election. You know yourself, he's very tough because he's oh, very yeah. forensic. Yeah, he, he took Jeremy Corbyn apart, who was underprepared during, during the election. But uh, no, I think I think Nandy would be their would be their fi- their finest uh, choice. That all the polling at the moment suggests she has a lot of ground to make up, and it looks a two horse race between Keir Starmer and Rebecca Long-Bailey, who is, despite her denials, the continuity Corbyn candidate. And, of course, as she in one breath says, I'm not the Corbyn uh, continuity candidate, and in the next she's given him 10 out of 10 as a leader. Um, so she, she's kind of uh, clearly conflicted on how she handles that, that issue. But see, see, now you're, I take issue with you where, where you say it goes to April the 4th, mm. and, it's, and it's, too, it's too long. I think mm. it's too short. The what? reason, the reason, the reason, the reason I argue this, Nigel, is Labour's just suffered a fourth successive election defeat mm-hmm. in nine years. That mm-hmm. eighty seat majority Boris Johnson has, which is effectively eighty seven because Sinn Fein don't turn up, means he won't lose any votes, and the external election will be four or five years. I think Labour needs a long, hard look at itself, a really detailed post mortem. And then it should hold its leadership election. I think it's gone. I think it's gone too soon. I think it, it needs a fundamental rethink. Now okay. that doesn't mean chucking all the all the bathwater out with the baby and ditching all the policies, but it does mean you've got to shape yourself for the next election. And while you're and when you're suffering from the last one, I don't think you're in a position to do Isn't it. Isn't the reality, Kevin, that Labour can't win? I mean, for Labour to win in five years, I mean, it would need a sort of 1945 type swing. Uh, I mean, really, they need a leader for at least 10 years, don't they? Yeah, um, arguably. And you, you might need your Neil Kinnock first mm. to, to actually reshape the party before you get your John Smith, who I think would have won, or Tony Blair, who certainly did. It's just leaving politics aside. Although pol- politics is also, as you know, incredibly volatile at the moment. Uh, and we keep looking at old maps when the way of the way forward is yet to be charted uh, properly. So it is it is possible they could overturn that huge Tory majority. Very difficult to get uh, an overall majority themselves, but you could see them becoming the biggest party if all the cards fall right. We don't know what the state of the economy will be. We don't know what the standing of Boris Johnson will be. Of course, governments do take um, damage and hits over the over, over the time. Um, Johnson did well in increasing the Conservative share of the vote by two percent in the fourth election, but Labour lost because its own vote fell eight percent. That's why it lost. Labour beat itself. Yeah, in yeah some no, 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 I think that's absolutely right. And Kevin, one last story quickly: Jeremy Corbyn is apparently putting forward John Burko. Tom Watson and one of his former uh, key aides and chief of staff, Carrie Murphy, for peerages. Yeah, I, I remember. Why? I, I remember at the very beginning he, he, he was going, going to have nothing to do with patronage. I know. Patronage. Oh, yeah. but, but I think the reality kicks in. One, leaders like to uh, exercise that patronage. And two, there is, in truth, and I'm, uh, I'm with you, I think the House of Lords should be absolutely elected. No one mm. should be mm. appointed. It shouldn't be a House of cronies. This. 
this York idea is is just a kind of smokescreen to, yes. to take us away from the main the main concern. But he, he, putting forward uh, Comrade John, brother Burko, <laughs> is, uh, <laughs> is unusual. And, and he, the uh, the speaker, has been on one hell of a political journey from the Monday Club on the far right of the Tory party in his youth to becoming uh, Labour friendly, should we say. Uh, now, it'll be interesting to see if he sits with Labour or whether he goes to a crossbencher. But traditionally, for centuries, the retiring leader, uh, sp- sorry, the retiring speaker of the House of Commons has been automatically appointed to the House of Lords. You can think that's mad, but that's what's happened. And it looked like Boris Johnson wasn't going to do it because he wanted to punish Burko over, over Brexit. Well, it now looks as if if Corbyn is going it's to... It's quite a twist, uh, isn't it? Him. Yeah, it's it, quite a twist. Whoa. It's quite a twist. Kevin, thank you ever so much for joining us. That was Kevin Maguire, associate editor of the Daily Mirror, and he takes a different view to me. He thinks, actually, because there's not going to be an election for four or five years, it wouldn't matter if the Labour Party took six months doing this. My view was, if it runs to the 4th of April, we're all going to get very bored. But, hey, who's worrying about the Labour Party too much right at this moment in time, apart from themselves? This is the Sunday edition of the Nigel Farage Show here on LBC, and it is... Is 47 minutes past 10. Back for its third year. And the winner is... The Global Awards 2020. LBC and its sister stations are joining together to bring you an unforgettable awards night. Show your appreciation for LBC's Mr Steve Allen. The Global Awards 2020 with Very.co.uk. Rewarding the very best from the world of music, news and entertainment. But who will win this time? Vote now. Download the Global Player app or have your say at lbc.co.uk. The Global Awards 2020. With very.co.uk. Get more out of every day. LBC. The personal history of David Copperfield is now a BAFTA nominee and a winner of five Biffa Awards, including Best Screenplay and Best Supporting Actor Hugh Laurie. That's good to hear. From the acclaimed director of The Death of Stalin. What do we do with him? If I were you, I'd watch him. Don't miss David Copperfield in cinemas January 24th. Treat yourself this weekend and save even more in the Furniture Village sale. But hurry, extra savings on sofas, dining and beds end this Sunday. This weekend on Sky Sports, it's Liverpool versus Man United. Liverpool are accelerating away this time. Liverpool's eyes are focused on their first Premier League title. But as ever, Man U will do all they can to stop them. Watch it live only on Sky Sports Super Sunday. And right now, get all eight sports channels for just £20 extra a month for 18 months. Only until midnight Sunday. Search by Sky Sports. With a new 18-month minimum term contract requires Sky TV. Prices may change. Offer ends 19th January. My name's Luke. I live in Dunstable with my wife and four daughters. We've got a ring doorbell too out the front. Every time there's someone who comes up to the door, it notifies my phone and then I can actually see if there's anyone dodgy at the door. A while ago, we had an incident at the house. My wife and I was in bed about 1.30 in the morning. We got a notification on my ring app on my phone. So I looked on the actual video itself and it showed me that he was trying to get underneath the mat to see if there was a key there so we can actually get into the house. The video clip allowed the police to see exactly who was in front of the camera and where that person was touching the door and that allowed the crime scene technician to dust for prints. Thanks to the video clip and his fingerprints, that was enough to convict him. The most important thing for me is when I'm not here during the night, I need to know that the family's safe and Ring Doorbell does that. Join Luke and the millions of people protecting their homes with Ring. Learn more at ring.com. It's the January Savings Event at Oak Furniture Land. There's great big savings on solid hardwood furniture. Online and in-store now. End Sunday. Critics adore BAFTA nominee David Copperfield. This calls for a celebration. It's impossible to resist, says The Guardian. Tell me another one. It's wonderfully unexpected, says The Telegraph, featuring an all-star cast, including Dev Patel, Tilda Swinton, Hugh Laurie, Peter Capaldi, and Ben Whishaw. It thrills me to the stomach. David Copperfield, in cinemas January 24th. The Nigel Farage Show on LBC. Well, it's not just the UK media that are covering this royal saga. Indeed, as soon as I finish coming off air here at 12, I'm headed down to Fox News Studios to go live into their breakfast show in America. My sense is the world is looking at this, I wonder. Because our next caller, who's a brand new caller to the LBC, is Anne from Florida. Good, very early good morning, Anne. (laughs) 
Yes, good morning, Nigel. It is very early here. Yeah, now, has, um, it, has it been wall-to-wall, sort of CNN, Fox, everything, the last 24 hours? No, because, as you know, there's all the nonsense about the impeachment right. going on okay. over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the wall-to-wall. But nevertheless, it's being covered w- yep. without a question. Yeah. Um, but I think my thoughts about this are this. Um, Harry is definitely putting his wife and child first. There's no question about that. We all understand that. And everybody, no matter where you are in the world, wishes them well because that's human nature. However, I think my uh, feelings about Harry is that he's looking at this very short term, and I think that's because that's where he's at right now, and not long term. I think there will be a huge loss for him long term, um, especially about his military yeah, absolutely. This, uh, absolutely. connection that's being lost, and also his relationship with William, because it wasn't that long ago when William, Kate, and Harry were known as the Three Musketeers. They were very, very tight. So I think that's yeah, going to be a and, huge And loss. then, Anne, when Meghan arrived, there was the picture, and for a bit they were called the Fab Four. And now, yes. and now we learn that the two women haven't spoken for at least six months. Ex- Exactly. And I think there is a pattern here with regard to Meghan. And, you know, look, none of us are behind the closed doors and all the rest of it. We understand that. But, you know, certain patterns are very, very clear. And I think what Meghan's not doing is she's not looking at her husband's losses. There's no question she's getting what she wants and what she needs. And there's no question that Harry's putting her needs first. Yes. But I don't see her being unselfish or considering his losses or being supportive Mm. of his losses or bringing to his attention his losses long term. That's the part of the equation I don't see. No, that's interesting. There was a a comment, um, alleged comment, that Harry made as the planning for their wedding uh, was getting underway, some dispute with the palace as to what was to be done. And Harry said, Meghan gets what Meghan wants. Boy, he was right about that. And how long have you lived in America? Uh, 40 years. 40 years, right. (laughs) You still sound remarkably English, I have to say. Well, Uh, I don't think adults lose their accent when they move. I mean, there's no New Yorker that moved to Florida that ever lost their accent. (laughs) (laughs) How do you think, how do you, I mean, given that they'll live in Vancouver, but clearly America's going to be the big market for them. How do you think Americans will take to Prince Harry? Well, first of all, I think, you know, from the American perspective, I think that while the Hollywood elite might be bowing and scraping to them at at some point and, you know, for, for purposes that will probably be mutually Um, good for both parties, the Americans as a rule are pretty much sort of get over yourselves. I I really think that'll be, Mm, and I think that'll be a surprise for, a surprise for Harry, frankly. Mm, Interesting. And thank you ever so much for calling in. Are you a regular LBC listener? I am. I listen all the time. Yes. Very good. 40 years away and you can't give it up. Fantastic. And thank you very much indeed. Let's go to Chrissy, another new caller to this station from Horsham. Good morning, Chrissy. Hi, Nigel. So, winners and losers, come on, scores on the doors. Tell us, what do you think? Right, well, I actually agree with a lot of what your last caller said. Mm -hmm. Um, I do think Harry is probably going to be in big trouble at some point. Mm, Because he is going to be moving away from everything that he knows how to do and his support base. Um, Also, I think, you know, he said he doesn't like cameras in his face you know this move i think is going to just put more cameras in his face and of course um megan she's used to it and she actually seems to like it so i can't see how they can go forward um you know working together on the same thing no it's going to be very difficult isn't it I i mean i think living on vancouver island they will be left alone of that i've got no doubt uh, uh, but equally, when they're at Frogmore Cottage, they're left alone. But I think it's this business of going out and making money, uh, yes. Chrissy, isn't it? I mean, I mean, yeah. you know, there's there's a bit more sound footage of of of, of that um, premiere in London where, you know, Harry 
is talking to the boss of Disney. And, and, and we've got the words now. I mean, he's actually saying that, you know, we are making this pitch to you. So they've clearly been thinking this way for a long time. Nigel, I, I, Nigel, I, I, I worry, you Chrissy, know? I worry that they could be devaluing the monarchy. I think you're right. And did you know that there were certain YouTubers that had got onto this months ago? Mm. It's only now that the mainstream media has caught up. So um, yeah. this has been in the pipeline yeah. for months. Yeah, yeah. And people, I don't think, understood that. No, that's fair. And sometimes, sometimes, Chrissy, the, the YouTubers and others are ahead of the game and they're right, but often they're ahead of the game when they're wrong. So I mean, it, it, it kind of can work both ways. How does the Queen come through uh, yeah. all, all, all of this to you? Sorry, could you repeat that? Yeah, yeah. How, how does the standing of the Queen look to you today? I think um, I think the monarchy has taken a knock, but mm. I think she has behaved perfectly. She, she's done the only thing she could do, and she's done it with grace. And I think people will see that. Yeah, she's pretty. So, re- she's pretty remarkable, yeah, isn't she? Chrissy, absolutely. Thank you ever so much for your call. Lots of passion here. Quite a lot. Of, quite a lot of people now worried that Harry is going to be a little bit lost over there on the west coast. Nicola is a new caller to this show from Swindon. Good morning to you. Hello. Hello. Hello, Nigel. That's the first time I've, I've had a chance to speak to you on here. I have met you on The Right Stuff years ago. Right, OK. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, well, we all get that around a bit. We all get around a bit. That you wanted the second referendum. Uh, well, I said we have to get ready for one if, it, if, if it's coming, but thank God it hasn't, and thank God yeah. we're leaving. But, uh, now, I can see where Harry's coming from. Uh, he, sa- he saw his mother die where she was being hounded by the press and the publicity. Yes. And in my mind, I think he's worried that the same thing is going to happen to his wife and child. And he can see that he can make, a, make a, an, enough as a commer- commercial living without the royal family. And money at the end of the day isn't everything. We're all talking about the financial aspect, but it isn't everything. If he can have a happy life with his wife well, and child... What is and it? Is, is, uh, it, 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 it is, mo- is money everything to Meghan, I wonder? Well, but she, she's, got the, she's got the ability to earn it on her own right. But not, they, they but can not, still have... but not all the while she's performing royal duties, which is, what no. she ma- which is what she signed up for when she married him. Yes, but I don't know. We, we don't know... Do any of us really know which of them made the decision? Was it Megan who said, let's get out and let's go alone? Or as he said to her, let's get out because he could see a repeat of ha- what happened to his mother. He was a young lad when his mother was hounded mm. by the press. Mm. And you think what that, what effect that must have had well, on him. I tell you Forget what, royal. I tell you what Forget- though, they're going to get hounded. If they go to Los Angeles and places like this and want to make, make real big commercial money, they will get hounded by the press even more than they have been. Thanks ever so much indeed for your call. Well, I'm going to keep this going because Channel 5 have made a documentary and the star of the show is one Thomas... Markle, and he does, uh, and it's reported here in the press today, say some pretty remarkable things. He says they're turning into lost souls, the couple. He says they are turning the royal family into Walmart with a crown on it. When they got married, they took on an obligation. The obligation is to be part of the royal family. Now they're giving it up. Have they cheapened the royal family? In a moment, I'll talk to Angela Levin, royal commentator, biographer, and author of Harry conversations with the prince are they cheapening the royal family on your radio on global player and play lbc leading britain's conversation this is lbc From Global's newsroom at 11 o'clock, the Queen says Prince Harry and Meghan and their son Archie will always be much-loved members of her family. Buckingham Palace has confirmed from the spring the Sussexes will stop carrying out royal duties and no longer use their Royal Highness titles. The public will also stop funding the couple, who will be able to seek their own sources of income. Royal commentator Phil Dampier has told LBC he thinks Meghan is the big winner from the new agreement. I don't think she's bothered about HRH in front of her name as long as she can call herself the Duchess of Sussex and make money and do the deals and and support the charities and causes she wants to. I think Harry at the moment is partly a winner but could be a big loser in the long run. He's given up to some extent his friends, his family, his, his attachments with the military. 
The couple are expected to spend the majority of their time in North America, but there are still questions about how their security will be funded in future. Detectives in Leicester are searching for a man who stabbed a 10-year-old boy in the street. The child was attacked while out with his mother at around 20 past five yesterday afternoon. His injuries are not life-threatening. Officers say the suspect, who fled the scene, was a chubby Asian man in his mid-twenties. The government's looking at proposals to move the House of Lords outside of London. Ministers say it's just one idea aimed at making sure every part of the UK feels properly connected to politics. The Sunday Times says York is the front-runner to host the new second chamber of parliament, with Birmingham another contender. People suspected of stalking could be given court orders to stop them contacting their victims while they're investigated by police. From tomorrow, officers in England and Wales will be able to apply to magistrates for the new measures. They're designed to protect victims at the earliest opportunity. Dr Emma Short from the Susie Lamplew Trust has welcomed the move and told LBC stalking affects both men and women. Probably around half the number of women that are affected, but certainly a very significant proportion of these victims are men. And really, it's very important important. If this is affecting men or women, they do come forward, report it to the police, get support. 17 more people in central China have been diagnosed with a new form of viral pneumonia that's already killed two patients. In total, 62 cases of coronavirus have been identified and the virus has spread to Thailand and Japan. The head of the train drivers union, Aslef, says he's frightened by the potential scrapping of the controversial HS2 railway. Mick Whelan says the country is already about 30 years behind where it needs to be on infrastructure building. An independent review is looking at whether the high-speed rail project should continue to be built. LBC weather after a frosty start, mostly dry with sunny spells. Some fog patches in the west, which may persist in places. Cloudier and windier in the far north and a high of 7 degrees. From Global's newsroom for LBC, I'm Simon Conway. Air France. France. La France. Is in the air. With our new Olala deals, you don't just have to imagine. You can be strolling the sandy beaches of Cape Town, exploring the Forbidden City in Beijing, or discovering the old town in Quito. Olala. Oh C'est magnifique. You can afford to let your imagination fly far, far away. Air France. France. La France. Is in the air. Book your flights via Paris by Tuesday, the 21st of January at airfrance.co.uk. This is LBC from Global, leading Britain's conversation, The Nigel Farage Show. So Channel 5, clever old them, have got a big documentary coming out, and the star of the documentary is Thomas Markle. Now, of course, there's been, been this very dramatic fallout uh, between Meghan Markle and her father. Indeed, at the wedding, the only member of her family that was there was her mother. But some of the things uh, that uh, Thomas Markle is saying are, I think, all right, it's his side of the story, but they're pretty damning. The documentary is going to be aired fairly soon, but we have got some clips of it already. Let's have a listen to Thomas this Markle. This is like one of the greatest long, long living institutions ever. Uh, uh, they're destroying it. They're, they're cheapening it. They're, they're making it shabby. Uh, they're turning it into a Walmart with a crown on it now. It's not, it's, not, it, it's something that's ridiculous. They shouldn't be doing this. Pretty damning comments. Well, to assess to what extent they are behaving in a shabby way and damaging the institution. And in particular, to carry on with that theme, and it's interesting, wasn't it? Caller after caller before the break saying they were worried for Harry and what he would do giving up all these associations of a life that he knows here. Well, I've got a real, a proper Harry expert with me this morning because I've got Angela Levin, raw commentator, biographer and author of Harry, Conversations with the Prince. Angela, welcome to thank LBC you. and thank you very much indeed. For joining us, I had last week. I had some people on saying, you know, they can't have their cake and eat it. They can't privatise the monarchy, and 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 I think public opinion was pretty much there. And the Queen, it appears, has acted decisively. But does you know, if they're going to go off, uh, live on Vancouver Island, make their money in Los Angeles, is there a danger that they are cheapening the monarchy? Well, I think the very reason why the Queen has been has has given them a sort of farewell, sugary coated farewell note, is because she feared that, and she wants to make sure that they are no longer representing the royal family. Um, 
they're not going to do any engagement on her behalf. They, um, the things that Harry's like most, which is the military, mm. is no longer going to be allowed to have any association with that officially. Uh, they've got to pay back the two point four million pounds that they've spent on renovations of Frogmore Cottage in Windsor, um, and they're not going to be funded by the public anymore um, so that is an answer to the question of is she worried most certainly I mean they wanted to come out with something called progressive royalty and oh, yes, I couldn't you know, work that we out don't at all. know what that is but she wasn't going to give it a chance and again you know what your listeners have said you can't be half in and half out you can't cherry pick you can't have your cake and eat it there's lots of ways of explaining it but you're either in mm. or out yeah it's the firm isn't it it's uh, the firm yeah yes yeah yeah, yeah. Now, now you know harry pretty well just just explain the extent to which you know him and you followed him to lbc's listeners yes i uh, wanted to write about harry because i thought that he'd look more mature he was cooperating with the royal family it was 2017 and so i was allowed to follow him on engagements for about 15 months throughout all that time wow. And if you are, you know, like watching people like I do, you learn quite a bit about them during that time. Um, throughout that time, I kept asking at regular interviews and ever so politely if I could get to interview him at Buckingham Pal at Kensington Palace. And I said, no, 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 he never does interviews. And then suddenly I got a phone call saying, um, are you free tomorrow afternoon? You can have 20 minutes with the prince. Well, as you know, 20 minutes is nothing, really. You don't get anywhere. But I thought, well, the way I'm going to get round this is to ask him a question that is so important that he will let me stay longer. So I thought about it carefully, went to the palace, hello, how are you? He always welcomes you with a joke, where well, he used to anyway, and uh, sat down and he said, OK, I think you've got a lot of questions. And uh, I said, yes, well, my first question, Your Royal Highness, is that I've seen you talk to children who come from very damaged homes. I've seen you talk to uh, ex-servicemen and women who have been psychologically as well as physically mm. damaged. Mm. You've made the most incredible impact on them. But I'm wondering whether you use these opportunities to also look after your own mental health. Wow. That was some question. <laughs> so there was absolute silence, and I thought, I'm either going to get thrown out <laughs> or, it'll, or it'll work. So in for a penny, long, in for a pound. <laughs> long pause, and he said, that's a very big question. Another long pause. And then he said to me, you're right, of course. Mm. And the tone of the conversation was very, very different after that. It was risky, but yeah, it was Yeah, no, worth very it. interesting. And you made a comment there that I thought was really interesting at the start when you said that he'd welcome you or he'd welcome people with a joke. Yes. And then you said, at least he used to. Because yes. I don't know, but it seems to me that over the course of the last six months or more, he looks miserable. He looks haunted. We've seen some tears in public. I mean, marriage isn't making him happy, or have I got that wrong? Well, I don't know about the marriage not making him happy, but I don't think he feels he's making Meghan happy enough, and I think that's ah. weighed on his, on his mind a lot. And, of course, we've discovered today that, in fact, the Queen has known quite a long time about... Uh, their unhappiness of being part of the royal family and I suspect that you know they've been talking about this and she's got more and more unhappy which we heard about in South Africa when she said she felt she was existing and not living well if that wouldn't make a, a new husband of under two years very unhappy I don't know what would no okay no, I get that point I get that point but part of it is because of it and indeed the Queen herself uh, you know, said as a result of intense media scrutiny over the last two years, although, of course, all the royals get intense media scrutiny. But uh, very interesting, isn't it? Because if they're going to get away from media scrutiny, but to make money, they're going to be, you know, in the Los Angeles, West Coast uh, life. I mean, surely they've got this wrong. Isn't the, isn't the media scrutiny going to get even worse? Well, that's my view, actually. Uh, at mm. least they're going to swap it. They're going to swap it from being in the royal spotlight to being Celeb. in the celebrity spotlight. Yeah. I don't think Meghan's really understood the difference between the two. Harry explained it to me in one of our conversations, and he said that if you're royal, 
if you're if you're royal, you have to be there twenty four seven, and you have this sense of duty that keeps you there and drives you. If you're a celebrity, you pick and choose who's going to do your PR, which papers you're going to talk to, and when you're going to talk to them. Harry will always be famous in our eyes worldwide. He's hugely loved. He's second most popular royal to the Queen, and he will still be a prince in everybody's eyes. And um, they will. But, you know, with a but, different but, tide of publicity. But Angela, what will he do? Well, that's also very. And she true. can go back to. I mean, she. Well, they've mm. got Disney voiceovers. They've been pitching for. She might do some acting again. Uh, she might go on the Oprah Winfrey. Show. I mean, you can see that she can have a completely full life out yeah. there. What does he do? Well, she's also got loads of friends and good connections, which Harry won't have that either, mm. or his family. Um, I think that's a really big problem. He's never worked in, a, in the way that you or I might think of work and um, he's had lists of what he's going to do written out for him planned months and months and months ahead mm. um, he won't work in an office he told me he can't bear sitting in an office looking at a computer he gets very agitated by it um, it's very very difficult I hope he will keep up the Invictus Games charity which he's involved in and also Tintabule which is this charity in Africa which is for um, young kids who are uh, whose parents have died of AIDS or they are suffering from HIV but that's not enough to keep a man no. in his mid-30s busy and there were lots of other patronages too that he had well, well I mean, they're all gone I mean they can't stay can they? no they're all gone right, they've all they gone have. they have all gone and the military ones in particular have gone yeah um, and I don't know how he'll find out something what he can do but I do hope Megan will help him I mean, he helped her here as much as he could, not satisfactorily it, it, within the royal family. And I hope she will help him find things, not to just trail around after her. That would be too humiliating. Yeah, and, and he's had a fallout with his own family. He's been forced to leave his other family, which is the army, I would suggest. He thought of it as his family, actually. Yes, yes. He said, I think of it, we're all mm. brothers here. That's absolutely spot on. Yeah, and, yes. they've, and served twice. He'd never been happier doing that. Served in Afghanistan. He must have loved the, the roles that he, he had. Loved. He I mean, these, these are going to be terrible gaps yes. for him, aren't they? I mean, there are I mean do you worry for his future? I'm very worried for his future. I became very fond of him, and I think he's quite charismatic. Mm. And this mischievous twinkle in his eye, mm. and brilliant with people who need help um, I have no idea and I do fear that if you want something and you actually get it and it's all been very very tricky you might feel euphoric at first and then it dies down a bit and then you look back on it and you think about it and I think he will miss his family I can't mm. see how he can't miss his family mm. I think it's real he will he want to show off baby Archie won't he to you know you would have uh, thought let so, his cousin Angela. see See him. You would have thought so. I think it's a very, very well, difficult Well, we all hope. We all situation. hope. We all hope that it works for them. I think some of us are sceptical, but we hope it works for them. But finally, and importantly, this was, I mean, he was the member of the royal family who, to my kids' generation, made the royals look cool. Yes. In a most remarkable way. Uh, and I felt that the royal family had never been more popular ever in centuries because you didn't just have an older generation respecting the monarchy. There was suddenly young kids go, monarchy, oh, that's really cool. Yes. And with him gone, and when you look around at what's left, you've got Andrew now in disgrace Out. and gone and not coming back. Uh, you've got Princess Anne who works her socks off, but, I mean, she's 70. Um, you've got William and Kate with huge responsibilities. I, I mean, just how much harm has this episode done the royal family? Well, I think it's done a lot of harm. I think it would be very hard to reconstruct it. Where it has been quite interesting is that it's um, induced huge support for the Queen. I mean, poor woman, she's 93. It, you, sh you can't go against her still. She's amazing. Oh, she's but a leader. She's had a terrible year in 2019 mm. and she could well have done without this. Not least because she adores Harry. They did tricks together at the Olympics and with the Obamas. You know, um, they, they behaved very naughtily and, and had a lovely time. It's very sad. No, it is sad. It, it, well, the whole thing is sad. Thank you very much for coming in and talking to us. And give us your personal insights into Prince Harry, who has been this much-adored character. And uh, 
Everyone wishes him well, but gosh, a lot of us have got our doubts. This is The Nigel Farage Show. Here on LBC, it's 11.15. This is LBC. O-A-T hyphen L-Y exclamation mark. That's how you spell Oatly on the side of our oat drink packages. But if you sing it, it sounds like this. O-A-T hyphen L-Y exclamation mark. Trade later life. The Greater Life with McCarthy and Stone's brand new development in Hatfield, Highclere House. To find out more and make the most of your retirement, join us for fizz and canapes and speak to our dedicated team on hand to answer your questions, whether renting, buying or a bit of both. Don't miss out. Make sure to join us on the 21st of January to secure your dream apartment. To find out more, call 0800 201 4691. Retirement living to the full. This weekend on Sky Sports, it's Liverpool versus Man United. Liverpool are accelerating away this time. Liverpool's eyes are focused on their first Premier League title, but as ever, Man U will do all they can to stop them. Watch it live only on Sky Sports Super Sunday. And right now, get all eight sports channels for just £20 extra a month for 18 months. Only until midnight Sunday. Search by Sky Sports. With a new 18-month minimum term contract requires Sky TV. Prices may change. Offer ends 19th January. January is tough enough without a broken boiler. Keep your home warm and working this winter with two years interest-free credit and your boiler installed by one of our expert engineers. Plus, you'll get a five-year British gas warranty. And we can even quote by video call after work or on weekends. Get a quote by the 29th of February and you can also get £200 off a new boiler or £400 off for our existing home care customers. Search British Gas New Boiler. Conditions apply. We live in an age where you can stream any box set instantly. But staying on top of our pensions is anything but instant. Pension B can transfer most old pensions together into one simple online plan. So you can manage your pension on your smartphone as simply as streaming that box set. Download the app or visit pensionb.com today. Authorised and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority. Capital at risk. Oat drink is like milk, but it's made from oats instead of a cow. Now that you know, here's a jingle to help you remember that our name is Oatly. This is LBC, the Nigel Farage Show. Call 0345 6060 973. Text 84850. Tweet at LBC using the hashtag Farage on LBC. Well, that was very interesting, wasn't it? Because, you know, Angela Levin, who clearly has got to know Prince Harry well, followed him for a very, very long time. And when she said, I am very worried for his future, uh, I think that was a very telling comment. And when I made the comment to her, well, wasn't the army, wasn't the military his second family? She said, yes, that's how he referred to it. Um, now, last week, uh, very, very interesting. We spoke to James Glancy, former Royal Marine officer, uh, and James was really, really worried that Harry, as Captain General of the Royal Marines and, and, and with the title His Royal Highness, would be out making money on the west coast of the USA and Canada, uh, and that may well privatise the monarchy. Uh, and I'm joined by James Glancy now. James, good morning. Hello, James. Yeah, hello. Hello, hello. hello. James, hi. Well, you know, last week you basically said he can't have his cake and eat it. The Queen has intervened, and he will no longer be your Captain General of the Royal Marines. How do you feel about that? Uh, this is a really bold uh, and honourable decision. And I, I, I don't think it would just be the Queen that made it. I think, I'm sure Harry has, has, has come to that conclusion. Um, it would have been very difficult to do this 50-50, as I said last week. Um, they've been under a huge amount of pressure. If you just look at the, the articles being t t churned out, in the media, all, all of it negative. In, you know, in my opinion, it's no wonder they want to escape. But um, he's been a tremendous public servant, and it's going to be a huge loss um, to the armed forces and to this country. What I'm glad to see is that he's continuing to do his really good work with the Invictus Games. Mm. He's been doing so much mm. for veterans, especially mental health, uh, and, of course, amazing conservation charities. But I think, ultimately, um, they've come to the right decision it's an honorable decision um to not commercialize the monarchy to make it to go and start a life 
with his family and he's prioritizing that and you know um, ab- i think it's an admirable decision yeah i think it's absolutely the right decision it, it had to be one or the other and, and and clearly this 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 decision is now decisive and we know and we know where we go what 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 worries me james for him you know, and I was just talking to uh, Angela Levin, who, who who did a biography of Harry and got to know him, is that he regarded the army, the military, as being his second family after his service. He'd been out in Afghanistan, etc. And he had these positions like being Captain General of the Royal Marines. Uh, and, you know, you're an ex-serviceman. I know you're still very heavily involved with the Marines. This will be a huge wrench for him, won't it? Well, I'm not hugely involved but i am involved in uh, some veterans charities yeah um well look, when, I, when i left i found it really difficult you know mentally and emotionally because it is a family it's a team and you don't realize what you've got until you left mm. and i think harry struggled a lot of us struggle um and even now i find myself you know really missing the, the camaraderie and the sense of purpose and i think that's going to be very difficult but what i'm pleased as I said before, is that he is going to continue with Invictus. He's going to continue with um, mental health charities, helping veterans. And that will give him a sense of purpose. Um, you know, the, the, the uniform stuff, um, as, I, as I said before, that does require um, a member of the royal family um, to take to take that over, who's only uh, a mem- serving member of the, mon- of the monarchy, not, not half in, half out. But ultimately, I think this is going to be a, a difficult transition. No, absolutely. James, thank you very much indeed. Well, wasn't that interesting? That was James Glancy, former Royal Marine and Member of the European Parliament for another couple of weeks. Um, and James, who was very, very critical, very critical last week of the statement put out by the Sussexes, where they appear to want to have their cake and eat it, now says, and I quote, that it was an honourable decision. And so I think the conversation's moved on. Last week, the conversation was, Harry, you've let the side down, or, well, if he, well as long as he's happy, uh, let him go off and do what he wants to do. I, I think everyone now is, 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 is pleased that we've got clarity, but there are concerns. Concerns for the future of the royal family, and concerns about Harry as an individual and this huge wrench he's making from his family, his military connections, his country, and in particular, his brother. Lee is calling from Manchester. Lee, what do you make of it all this morning? Good morning, Nigel. Nice to speak to you again. Good to speak to you. Welcome back. So, 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 who, who are the winners? Who are the losers, Lee? Well, it seems to me, Nigel, like uh, from Meghan's point of view, there's there's two ways to look at it, like their background, for example. Meghan comes from a completely different background to Harry. Sure. And they found their way together. They both clearly have, you know, what was sort of from both families' sides, different expectations. The Queen and his his father and everybody else, they'd have had certain expectations of what he was going to do in the future, and the exact same with Meghan's family. There's been big rifts. But I can speak from my own experience here. I'm not going to shout any information out, Nigel, so please don't get the wrong impression. But I'm a little bit, me personally, in the public eye. I've got 90,000 followers. I'm not going to say anything about what it is. Don't worry, I won't be unprofessional and take advantage of this call like that. So I'll just say that now. However, Nigel, I've got, I've been in a similar position where everyone's judging everything about me. And do you know something? If, when you put yourself into the public sector like that, mm. that is one of the things that happens. But the proposal mm. here is that they're going to give up royal duties and come out of that public life and go into public life elsewhere. What do they think is going to happen? <laughs> well, it, it isn't going to be very different, is it? No, it's going to be worse. There'd be even more. It'd be even more people. You, you, there's sixty something million people in Britain, Nigel, and there's about a billion in America yeah. and Canada. Yeah. But I, I, I think it's, I, it's not. I, I mean, Lee. You know, I've been in public life for a long, you know, quite a long time. Well, I've only got 90,000, you know, and I know how hard I've been hit, so I couldn't imagine I, I, what I, it's like when you've got millions. But well, you just have to, but, but you just have to, you know, I, I think if you're <laughs> in a prominent public position, whether it's in sport, mm-hmm. media, politics, no matter what, royalty, whatever it is, you know, I think you have to take what's oh, written. You have to take what's written about you with, with a pinch of salt. And uh, have they taken it all too much to heart, perhaps? Yep, yep, uh, absolutely. I, I believe so because the fact of the matter is, the way that they got together for a start, pretty much said it all. You know, and I'm not here to shout badly about Megan, but she did didn't make herself look very good when she just sort of dropped everything and everybody, mailed a couple of wedding rings back to her ex-husband and then just went and got into a life with Harry like that. It just seemed a little bit ruthless, so she's made herself look a little bit 
you know, suspect there. I'm not judging her personally, but I can sort of see why some people are thinking, hmm, that seemed a little bit ruthless, you know. Yeah. How, what's it going to be like later once everything's well, set in stone and she's yeah. got what she wanted? Will Harry be then on the back burner? That's the problem. And then when you think of the little bit of advice that William gave Harry, just... You know, I'm not saying don't get married, but just know that you're sure, etc. And then he, mm. he seemed to do it, literally, it, within two years, whereas, like, um, William and Kate waited eight years. And they've had issues after eight years and trying to be sure about it, you know. So, of course, they're going to have issues. But the, that's just, that's their marriage, you know. And that's life. And that's life. Relationships. Isn't that the same for everybody they're they going from a public life into a bigger public life. I don't get their angle unless they want extra attention. Lee, <laughs> no, you make the point well. They're not; they will not be escaping media scrutiny. Uh, they absolutely won't. Paul says to me, Prince William is not on his own. He's got huge resources. The key is using and managing them properly. Uh, charities and military divisions run happily without princes and royals. Uh, yeah, Paul. Okay, fine. But I think the weight of responsibility on William's shoulders, regardless, becomes absolutely huge. There's nobody of his age group in the royal family, anywhere near his age group in the royal family, to share this with. Prediction time from Al. Meghan will run for a political seat somewhere within the next five years, and it won't be a Republican seat. No, it certainly would not be a Republican seat. That is for absolute certain. Uh, Jim is a new caller to this show from Middlesbrough. Good morning, Jim. Morning, Nigel. Good morning. So, winners and losers, Jim. Um, well, um, I'd just like to preface this by saying I am I'm, I'm a Republican by nature. Okay. Um, but uh, so you must be narrative... so you must be enjoying this, then, Jim. I think it's going to damage the royal family. Yeah. Mm. Um, but here's the narrative of as, as I see it. Um, Meghan sort of married into a family, um, and I don't think she quite understood the duty that was required. Of, oh come um, on, she must have. Royals. Oh come on, she must have done. She wasn't. I, I don't, she wasn't marrying blind. Into, it must have been explained to her, for goodness' sake. Well, I, I don't think she really understood, and I think she moved in. She obviously moved in circles in Hollywood um, that that had a certain lifestyle and this sort of ostentatious displays of of, of, of wealth and, and and sort of and, and power and 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 I think. When she she came here and 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 married into that, I don't think she understood that the the the, the requirement of, of the duty of our royal family, and I I genuinely think that, that that obviously she's not happy about the limits that have been put on her, and I think this is the motivating factor for for for, for them sort of um, for leaving this and, mm. and 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 trying to move move on to do something else. So I think I think it's obvious by the fact that they're trying to monetize now their their, their positions, um, and yeah, I, I don't think they are going to. I don't think they're trying to avoid the media. I think they're going to exist much more in a. Well, they learn their living. They learn their living. They, you know, their, their, their direct financial income will be mm. will, will be linked to how many Twitter followers they've got and all the rest of it, won't it? Oh yeah, of course, yeah. And I think they're going to move much more into a into a sort of a American style mm. um, celebrity sort mm. of culture. Um, and- Oh, of course. That's exactly what they do. And Jim, finally, just just quickly, can I ask you, as a Republican, when do yeah. you when do you see the monarchy ending in this country? I think Charles is an af- absolute gift to Republicans. Um, so, and I, I think it's it's it's, it's been it's been shown in, in in polls that that people don't actually mm. believe in in when they when they when they're uh, questioned on it, they don't actually well, believe in the hereditary so structure as it is. Because if I had the choice, William. If I had the choice, if I had the choice, Jim, do we have the Queen or President Killock? I'm going to stick with the Queen, aren't I? Um, well, I mean, and, and I would give you that choice, <laughs> and she would be more than uh, if she wanted to run, she would, she would, she would have that uh, be able to run. I mean, but won't we? If we move money. to, if we move to a president, we'll finish up with some clapped-out politician that's not much cop. That hasn't got any power, as the Queen doesn't. Well, the Queen does actually have power in certain circumstances. But well, then, well, then, well, then, even more, more sort of believe in my position. All right, I mean, all right. G- <laughs> no, Jim, it's good to have a Republican on, and we will have that debate at some point in the future. Thank you. But for now, it's 11.30, and time for the news with Simon Conway. The Queen says she supports the wishes of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex for a more independent life. Buckingham Palace has announced Harry and Meghan will stop working as members of the royal family from the spring and will no longer use their HRH titles. A 10-year-old 
12-year-old boy is recovering in hospital after being stabbed in Leicester. Police are searching for a man who attacked the child while he was out with his mother in the city yesterday afternoon. Jeremy Corbyn is reportedly nominating the former Commons Speaker John Burko for a peerage. The outgoing Labour leader is also thought to have put forward his former deputy Tom Watson and his ex-chief of staff Carrie Murphy for a place in the Lords. LBC weather after a frosty start, mostly dry with sunny spells. Some fog patches in the west which may persist in places. Cloudier and windier in the far north and a high of 7 degrees. This is LBC. You can always trust that song about a little shark to get the kids in the bath. But all it takes is a bit of faulty plumbing to set off the bedtime waterworks. Thankfully, at TrustedTrader.com, you can hunt out plenty of vetted, reviewed, reliable professionals in an abundance of trades. Like a plumber who'll rescue bath time. <laughs> and just like that, it's safe to go back in the water. Just a Here's the thing about block management. If you do it yourself, you're over here sorting out the insurance. And here, keeping everything compliant. Don't forget the grounds maintenance. And the service charges. And that's just what you need to do today. But because the ABC Estates block management team can look after every aspect of your property portfolio, from repairs to service charge collections, your time can, at last, be better spent elsewhere. Be as happy as Larry with Block Management from Alder Martin, Baines and Cuthbert. Talk to us today. Call 0800 888 or visit abcestates.co.uk. This weekend on Sky Sports, it's Liverpool versus Man United. Liverpool are accelerating away this time. Liverpool's eyes are focused on their first Premier League title, but as ever, Man U will do all they can to stop them. Oh, Watch it live only on Sky Sports Super Sunday. And right now, get all eight sports channels for just £20 extra a month for 18 months. Only until midnight Sunday. Search by Sky Sports. With a new 18-month minimum term contract requires Sky TV. Prices may change. Offer ends 19th January. I know I belong. I gotta be. This new year, get the whole family singing with an extra £500 off list price across the Skoda range between the 16th and 30th of January. Also available when purchasing with our finance offers. Search Skoda New Year New Car for more details. Driven by something different. Skoda. Exclude CityGo EIV and all SE technology variants. Order by the 30th of January and register by the 31st of March 2020. Off not available with contract hire. UK retail customers 18 plus. Finance subject to status. Terms and conditions apply. Visit skoda.co.uk. Standard. Stagnant. Same old, same old. That's not how you describe London. We're, well, different. London loves bright new ideas, embraces vibrant, evolving communities, and isn't afraid of standing out. We deserve an energy company that's as different as we are, one that's fair and affordable for all Londoners. London Power, a different kind of energy company. The Nigel Farage Show on LBC. In 12 days' time, we are leaving the European Union. It will happen at 11pm on Friday, the 31st of January. I have been astonished at the level to which the government just do not seem to want to celebrate this fear of upsetting Remainers, apparently. But however you voted in that referendum. This is a big moment in British history. After 47 years, we are leaving political union with Europe. Now, as you, some of you will know, I've organised an event that will take place in Parliament Square and 25,000 people have registered to come already. And I want it to be, you know, not overtly political in any way. I want it to be a celebration of a big moment. But of course, would it be complete without Big Ben bonging? And it did bong, didn't it, on Remembrance Sunday? And it did bong on New Year's Eve. And yet, I've been involved in talking to people over the last week trying to make this happen. Somebody who's put more time into it than me is Mark Francois, Conservative MP for Rayleigh and Wickford. Mark, good morning and welcome to LBC. Good morning, Nigel. Thank you for having me on the show. No, not at all. No, I'm... I'm I've been doing battle here this week uh, with the House of Commons Commission. We've had a bit of back and forth. They rather criticised uh, one of the guests I had on a programme the other week. And now I see in the Mail on Sunday this morning, revealed Minister's secret plot to stop 
Big Ben bongs for Brexit. What do you know about this, Mark? Well, Nigel, I, the story uh, says, I mean, just the first paragraph gives it away. The cabinet minister secretly plotted with the Commons authorities two weeks ago to kill off the idea of Big Ben bonging for Brexit, the Mail on Sunday can reveal. Now, look, I don't know which cabinet minister this was, but after all the effort I and others have put into it, I would quite like to have a chat with them about it. Now, I, what I can tell you is I've been doing some digging of my own And I've found out what actually happened at that meeting of the House of Commons Commission. Mm -hmm. So it might just take me a couple of minutes to explain, but if you bear with me, I've got a a pretty accurate readout on what took place. Right, let's hear it. Right, okay. So the House of... Right, the, the, the background to this is that the House of Commons officials who helped staff the commission presented a paper to the Commission on the whole refurbishment project for the Elizabeth Tower, including Big Ben. The original budget for this several years ago was £33 million. The paper that was presented the other day said that this had now escalated massively to £80 million. (laughs) million. Mm. So well over a a 2.5% times increase and that the, that the project was still accelerating in terms of cost, and therefore you couldn't possibly justify this extra £500,000 on top of all of that. Yeah? Now, there were some politicians, apparently, in the meeting who wanted to go ahead, but the officials were absolutely adamant that this could not be done, and it would cost half a million pounds. Right? With me so far, yeah? Mm-hmm. So... I was always very sceptical about that cost. So I tabled what's called a name-day parliamentary question earlier this week just to say, OK, what was the comparative cost at Remembrance Sunday and New Year's Eve when mm. Big Ben joined? Mm. We now have the answer. On each occasion, it was £14,200, <laughs> <laughs> well, including a... <laughs> the AT. Well, that's, so, a bit, that's a bit more like it, isn't it? Well, you see, you see, I mean, many of us, you know, were MPs, were pretty sceptical that the bureaucrats had, you know, bear in mind, nearly all these officials were appointed by John Burko, or Lord Burko, as we must learn to call him if Mm. Jeremy Corbyn gets his way. Mm. And it was on his watch that they lost all control of the expenditure on the refurbishment project. But anyway, yeah, so uh, we all knew that they were going to try and, you know, top the cost up to put people off. But even I never thought they would increase the cost 35-fold, Nigel. But, so, and, and, and yet, despite all the obstructionism, Boris Johnson in a TV interview said, oh, well, if people want to give a bob for Big Ben to bong, they can do a, crowd, a crowdfunding exercise. And you set one of these crowdfunding exercises up. Money was put in. Uh, and, and, and now they say they can't take public money. So at every angle... At every angle, the establishment has tried to stop Big Ben. If I was one of those people, Mark, who'd given money to the fund, what now happens to that money? Well, let me explain to you where we've got, Nigel, because I I checked just before coming on air. We're now at slightly over £262,000. So we've got halfway to the 500k target in just over three days. So the response from the British public has been absolutely phenomenal. And the average donation is £16.16. So this is Mr and Mrs Smith, whether they live in, you know, Barnsley or, you know, Blackburn or Barnstable, putting their money, you know, behind what sure. they believe should happen. But, but, if, the, and, but if the House of Commons... Yeah, yeah, right. So what I'm, you know, you know uh, Leave Means Leave and Arab Banks have given 50 k but the vast bulk of these have been relatively modest donations. We've had well over, I think, you know, well over 10,000 people donate. So... That money is still coming in. We have said very clearly that if we don't manage to make this happen, mm. uh, all the money in the fund would go to help for heroes. Yeah? So, but we, the, the additional thing now is we've got this breakdown now of the actual costs. Yeah. How is the 500k calculated? So here's what the commission has said. These are their figures, not mine. Yeah? The actual physical costs of, of striking the bell would be £120,000. 
That includes relaying the floor. That's the same floor they put in for New Year's Eve and then took out again. So what genius approved that decision? But anyway, you've got to relay the floor and you've got to attach, reattach the clapper to the bell, as the Prime Minister said in his yeah. interview. Yeah. They estimate that's 120,000. Now, look, I come from Essex. We know a bit about roofing and flooring. You know, that sounds a bit toppy to me. But anyway, let's say it's 120 but, for the sake of argument. But, Mark, whatever the numbers, whatever the numbers, are they going to allow this to happen? Well, look, let, let me just, if I may, Nigel, it is important. Let me just quickly go through the rest of the numbers, and then I'll try and answer your point. But it is important. They're then saying, they, in order to, to load on the, the, the cost, of, to big the number up, they're saying that the, the additional cost for interrupting the refurbishment works for a week to do this would be 100k a week. So it's about two weeks to go or just under. So that takes you, their figures, to 320, in which case yeah, Mark, we're already Mark, three quarters Mark, of the way Mark, there. The numbers don't matter a damn. Whether it's 14 grand to do it or half a million to do it, whether you raise 200,000 or 800,000, all of that's irrelevant. The question is, you know, even if you walk in with a cheque for a million, are they go? Are the authorities going to allow... Are there any circumstances they would allow this to happen? There is one. And that is that the Prime Minister, who started this, he kicked it all off on television, Nigel. It wasn't you, and it wasn't me, and it wasn't Bill Cash. It was the Prime Minister. Right. Yeah? He, he started this. He would need to table a motion in the House of Commons so that MPs can vote on it, instructing the House of Commons Commission to take the money. Well, he's your he leader, Mark. That, he's, he's your leader. He's a Brexiteer. Will Boris Johnson, as you say, he's the only man that can do it, Will Boris Johnson take the steps to make Big Ben bong? Well, he's now, he's now, he's now on, on the spot, isn't he, Nigel? I pleaded with him to do it because I think this is, this is turning into a scandal now. Senior officials of the House of Commons have deliberately inflated the cost of doing this to try and deter MPs and the British public. It's public disgusting. It. It's you know, appalling. They've been called absolutely red-handed. So... OK, when I go in on Monday morning, I'm yep. going to do three things. I'm going to call the... Con I'm going to write to the head of the National Audit Office and ask him to launch a formal investigation into the entire Elizabeth Tower project. The second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write to the Speaker, and Lindsay Hoyle is completely blameless in this. He's inherited this mess. I'm going to ask the Speaker to publish the Commission's dodgy dossier so that the House of Commons can debate what's in it and the public and your listeners can read the detail for themselves. And thirdly, I'm going to write to the Prime Minister and ask him to allow a free vote in the House of Commons on a government motion to say that this okay. should now go... Well, you're going to have there. to move fast, Mark, because time is running out. Look, I wish you well with it. I know you fought hard over it. Uh, it maddening. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Mark Francois, Conservative MP for Radio Wickford. And, you know, they are raising money. They are raising money, even though the 500,000 figures inflated. They are raising money. They're doing well with it. It's the obstructionism. Willful obstructionism. That is what we have found here. And he's quite right. Boris Johnson, it's entirely up to him. He could solve all of this. And I just wonder what the rest of the world thinks. Yeah, they want to run their own country. They don't want to be under the heel of Brussels. They can't even ring a bell. I mean, I don't think it looks very good for our country uh, either way. So we're going to finish off the last quarter of an hour talking about Harry, Meghan, the Queen, her decision. Who are the big winners? Who are the big losers? Uh, I know we've had lots of other stories too, so I will, in a moment, after the break, pack in as many calls as we can. And we are getting some Republican voices. Our last caller was Brian on Facebook. Let's hope it's the beginning of the end for the Royals. Nobody has the right to rule over anyone in the country. I'm noticing a lot more Republican voices over the last couple of weeks than I've seen for some time. I still think they're a tiny, tiny minority. I still think the Queen is the most respected human being in the world. And I think what we've seen overnight reinforces that respect. You're listening to the Sunday edition of the Nigel Farage Show here on LBC, and it's 11.45. 
Coming up at 12, Majid Noir's leading Britain's conversation. Next on LBC. At Ring, we've reinvented the doorbell. So no matter where you are or what time of day, you can watch over your home and the things you care about. Ring Video Doorbell streams HD video and two-way talk straight to your phone, so you can speak to whoever's at your door from anywhere. Delivery. Oh, great. Could you leave it with my neighbour, please? Sure, no problem. And it's so simple, you can install it yourself in minutes. See, hear and speak to whoever's at your door from wherever you are with Ring Video Doorbell. Available at ring.com and selected retailers. The real reason Sleeping Beauty fell asleep was because it was taking so long for the palace to sell and the handsome prince needed the proceeds to buy their new home with no time to dwell. I know who can help! Property Rescue! I'll contact them straight away! So he spoke to their friendly team who took care of every detail. They bought the palace direct with no legal fees to pay. Fast forward to living happily ever after. Visit propertyrescue.co.uk Property Rescue. Fast forward to solve. <coughs> Hello? It's time you swapped your daily grind for some sun, sea, and salsa! Sangria! Sun lounger! Siesta! Salsa! The dip! Sandal! Suntan lotion! Uh, we've done salsa, right? we? In the Seychelles, Spain, or anywhere else in the world at surprisingly low prices. When you need a holiday, it's time to travel Republic. Book with confidence at all protected. It's creeping ever closer. The 31st of January deadline for filing your tax return is just days away. It's time to act. Download EY Tax Chat now and connect with EY Tax Professionals to prepare and submit your tax return from just £329. Beat the deadline with minimal effort and maximum confidence. Search or download EY Tax Chat now. Standard. Stagnant. Same old, same old. That's not how you describe London. Where? Well, different. London loves bright new ideas, embraces vibrant, evolving communities, and isn't afraid of standing out. We deserve an energy company that's as different as we are, one that's fair and affordable for all Londoners. London Power, a different kind of energy company. It's your standby me station. So Your You To Me Are Everything station. And, of course, your Easy Like A Sunday Morning station. I'm easy like Sunday morning. That's the sound of LBC Sister Station. That's the sound of Smooth Radio. Listen on your radio, on Global Player, or ask your smart speaker to play smooth. The Nigel Farage Show on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. And some breaking royal news. The Queen makes a very public show of support for Prince Andrew, as he's seen by her side for the first time since that dreadful interview. And they've headed to church together this morning, less than 24 hours after the Megxit deal has been done. And there they are going in to Sandringham Church just a little bit earlier this morning. Well, she's... Maybe lost a grandson and a great grandson, and maybe this one's come back in from the cold. Although, one thing for certain is Prince Andrew will not be out doing many royal duties at any point in the near future. So, it's a hard Megxit. It's a clean break from the royal family. They will not be using the HRH titles. Who are the winners and losers out of this saga? Leslie is a new caller to this show from Hampstead. Good morning, Leslie. Good morning, Nigel. It's just occurred to me, actually, there's no reason why Harry couldn't go back into the military if he wanted to. I have a relative who is uh, interviewing and recruiting uh, former armory officers because they're so short of them. Yeah, what he could do, and, and if, I guess if everything went wrong, that's probably what he would do. <laughs> but, well, but, at least he gets his family back, if but, you know what but, I mean. But, <laughs> well, it's, well, I think that point about it being a second family is an important part of this story. Mm. Um, I really, really yep. do. Um, so... How do you read the deal that's been done? I don't, well, from from a, from a, the angle of security, I mean, 
he, if he uses private security in the United Kingdom, it can't be armed. So, so, so the public are still going to end up paying for his security because he's a kidnap risk, and so is his wife and his child. So, yes, I, one I, way or the other. I don't think we can argue about that, Leslie. I mean, after all, we provide security for former prime ministers. We provide security for former Northern Ireland secretaries, in some cases, home secretaries. Uh, and, you know, he is a very public figure. So when he's in this country, I don't think that's an argument, Leslie, do you? No, no, no. The other thing, of course, is when he's in uh, America and in uh, in Canada, do, 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 could, could he buy the same level of security over there? Again, armed, because no matter where he's in the world, he's still a kidnap risk, whether he's oh, here or elsewhere. Yes, I mean, armed security in America is a much easier thing to get permission for. In this country, private companies, armed security, it just isn't going to happen, apart from very exceptional circumstances. And one of the reasons why security does matter, of course, Leslie, is... Everyone says it's the media that hounded Diana to her death. Arguably, it was it was bad private security and a very poorly trained or half drunk chauffeur uh, that mm-hmm. led to the tragedy. Do you think Harry and Meghan are, ha- are heading off for a happy life? I think they're heading off for a difficult life. I, I think I think the grass may may look the great greener on the other side, but I very much doubt if it is. Mm. Mm-hmm. No, I think you're right. Leslie, thank you for your call. Nigel, the winner here is Megan. She is free of the restraints of being attached to royalty, says Vanessa in Solly Hull. Merlin says, Harry will now have time to binge watch The Crown and Game of Thrones. Well, we did say his wife could appear in one of the contemporary episodes. Nigel, Harry... Meghan and Man City all relinquished their titles yesterday. Yes, Tony, for those that follow it, Crystal Palace got a 2-2 draw at Man City and Liverpool are just sailing away off to the Premier League title. Harry losing his commission and military associations will ultimately be the hardest part of this divorce from the firm for Harry. This is his biggest sacrifice. I hope Meghan appreciates it. Jenny, that was very much a point that Angela Levin made earlier. That you know, she hopes that she, she hopes really passionately that Meghan understands just how much Harry has given up for her, and he is the bit. In my view, he is the big loser out of all of this. That's certainly how I feel about it. Fiona in Inverness says she thinks Harry's a fool. If they were sincere about charity work, they could have done so much good in this country, just like Prince Charles with the Prince's Trust and the Duke of Edinburgh with the award scheme. Now it's all about money. Should they be able to use Sussex Royal as a brand name? No, they should not, it seems to me. And remarkable, remarkably insensitive that the update on that website says, see here, the the recent work of his and her royal highnesses. Very strange. Let's get Annette, who's a new caller to LBC from Lincoln. Good morning to you. Good morning, Nigel. And can I first of all say thank you and thank the Lord we are leaving on the 31st after all this hassle. Will you be (laughs) celebrating, Annette? Uh, yes, in a modest way. <laughs> <laughs> no, just a big thank you. We've all suffered all this toing and throwing, and God bless you. Um, I don't think anybody's going to win out of this situation mm. with Meghan and Harry. I think they're all losing. Harry's going to lose out because he's lost a lot of support in this country. The charities are going to lose out. The royal family's going to lose out. Meghan's lost out because she's upset people. The only people who probably will win out of all this, as usual, will be the lawyers. Well, let's hope the lawyers don't need to get involved, um, Annette, in this. And, and, and tell me, are you a monarchist? Yeah, up to a point. Up to I would like to see the Queen stay here and, and look after us, but I think there's too many hangers-on. It does need slimming down, but I don't well, think this is the right, the right way that they've gone about it. It's just been slimmed down, and overnight the most popular young royal that there's been in, in recent history is gone. And have you noticed... His his um, demeanour has changed. He used to be a happy, smiling young man. Maybe it's the pressure, I don't know. <laughs> but everybody loved him. But he always looks miserable these days. He's obviously not very happy. But I don't personally think he's going to find happiness leaving this country. I just Can I just ask you a question to ask other people? Yeah, go Do on. you think this would have happened if he'd married, this sounds racist, it's not, an English girl in Greenwellis? 
well, it could have been a black English girl in green while couldn't it? Um, equally. <laughs> so so, so, yeah. I, so I, I'm not going to get the race thing mixed into this at all, because uh, I just don't think that's got anything to do with it. A couple of lunatics on Twitter or whatever, but it's got nothing to do with it. Um, Annette, he... I suppose some will say that it's history repeating itself. Some would say that it's the second American divorcee within 80 years that is wrecking the royal family. Some would say that. Uh, I think the fact she's American and divorce has got absolutely nothing to do with it. It's all about people. And I, Annette, what I would say is this. I thought it was very interesting that at their wedding, there was only one member of her family there. You know, maybe she's somebody that falls out with people. I don't know. But if he laid out to her before they got married, this is how the firm works, then I'm afraid, however strong her pull in him may be, I still think that he, that he has actually let the side down a little bit. But better a clean break than not at all. I'm going to let you go, Annette, because I want to try and get Aximor on a new caller from Cheshire. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Welcome to LBC. So you are going to be my final caller on this subject. Who are the winners and losers out of this Royal Saga? Well, thank, thank you very much, Nigel. This is my first time on the show as well. No, um, welcome. I think, I think the ultimate losers will be Harry and Meghan, uh, Meghan Markle, because they're leaving a family. Um, and like the other caller said previously, um, they will only realise what they left, what what benefit they lost once they resettled as normal citizens uh, in North America. Um, but in, uh, going back to your original question, in terms of who's cheap in the family, I do think. <coughs> Mm. Losing sight that actually Prince Andrew, I think, who's had more of a damaging effect on the royal family than Harry uh, and Meghan. So that's my view on that. Well, in a no, no, and I understand the reason for that. In a sense, the Harry and Meghan saga came along and has taken much of the spotlight away from Prince Andrew. He must have been, in one sense, at least quite relieved, and he's turned up at uh, Sandringham Church this morning with the Queen. Um, yeah, I mean. <sighs> How much damage does this do to the monarchy overall, do you think? Um, I think it might enhance the monarchy in one sense because it shows that the Queen is understanding of the reality that we're living. Uh, she understands that you can't, the two young people want to live their lives and they're entitled to live their lives, but there are responsibilities and choices that they need to make and she sets out clearly that she they can't uh, no longer hold the HRH title and uh, but, uh, well, equally... She wouldn't let them go. So I think, in one sense, that it's actually enhanced the monarchy's decision making and how they could be perceived. No, nope. okay. Thank you very much indeed for your call. Sam on Facebook says, "Why can't they be Sussex royal? They are still royals. They are the Duke and Duchess of Sussex." I'm surprised at you, Nigel. Well, if the Duke of uh, the Duke of Marlborough doesn't put royal in his title, does he? I mean, there are 25, I think it is now, royal dukes. Uh, look. The argument last week around which there was a, a quite a big degree of consensus was they cannot have their cake and eat it. And the Queen overnight has made sure that that is not the case. They are not using the titles HRH and they should therefore, in my opinion, not call themselves royal. But I know there's an awful lot of passion. I'm sorry for the callers that could not get through. Uh, I think in the circumstances, the decisions that have been made last night are the right ones. It's a clean break. It's a hard exit. Uh, and that's where we are. I wish them all the best. I think for Harry, there are going to be some huge gaping holes in his life, missing his own family and his second family, the military. <laughs> I will be back tomorrow evening at 6 o'clock. At 3 o'clock this afternoon, it's Ian Payne. But up next, it's Majid Nawaz. Thank you, Nigel. Coming up, Boris Johnson is planning to move the House of Lords permanently to York. Should we seize this moment to begin wide-ranging constitutional reform? Before that, the Mayor of Greater Manchester...